My name is Kevin Martins. I am the lead designer of Diablo 3. I'm Jason Regeer. I'm the lead programmer on Diablo 3. And so I, I uh, oversee a group of fantastic engineers, and we work with designers like Kevin and artists, too, to make the game breathe life into their, their vision. So. So I arrived in, in 2009, and sort of the first thing I tackled was trying to get a lot more advanced storytelling techniques into the game. We both wanted a lot more and richer story, but also less intrusive than Diablo 2. So instead of a long conversation, followed by a bunch of action and then ending with a long conversation, we wanted more of that to happen in the game during the action and in a way that wasn't distracting, but in fact added to the game. So that was sort of my initial push, and that's when I started. Jason? Well. I've been part of the project since the very beginning, and uh, it's been amazing to see how the game has evolved over time. And one of those things that Blizzard is well known for is for iterating on their projects. And uh, Diablo 3 is no different. The, the game that players are about to get has been refined you know, over the, the past several years, and uh, it's going to be a fantastic product. I can't wait for them to play it. Well. Um, Diablo 3, I think, really contains all of those things that people remember as the best parts of Diablo 2, and we carried that forward. But we've also made a ton of improvements. Diablo 3 is more accessible than ever to new players, but it also has challenging modes like Inferno, which present a challenge to even experienced players. I mean, nobody at our office has defeated Inferno mode yet. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's quite, a, quite, quite a great game. It's going to be able to, you know, to satisfy a lot of different play styles out there, I think. Sure. So to make content that is um, interesting and useful to the people who are very highly competitive or want the more advanced difficulties, etc., um, it, it's the same thing that I referenced in an earlier answer about having the storytelling be part of the action. We certainly have no shortage of hardcore players on our team, and you know they're rushing ahead and are more interested in the item game and the story, and they find themselves unusually interested in the story, and I've got that comment a lot, and it wasn't true initially. We had bad versions of it where people would skip everything, and people are stopping and listening, or just playing along and listening and you'll get these emails like, hey, I'm actually interested in the story. I never liked the story. So um, keeping it not slowing down the game and not stopping you and not forcing you to, you know, sit through a dialogue or something, that's been the trick to keep those people interested in the content. Um, and plus for the people who want to get, get ahead and just get to the higher difficulty levels, uh, it's the first part of the game, you know, first playthrough of normal up to level 30 where they're getting used to all the abilities and things and then we, we ramp up the challenge in the next part. So at that point, those, they should be experts, they should understand the skills, they'll have tried them all together. So no matter how hardcore, no matter how skilled you are, that first normal playthrough is going to be useful to you and hopefully really interesting. Sure. Well, the, uh, the auction house itself uh, really sprung out of uh, Diablo 2, and there was a, players made it very clear to us that they wanted to be able to, to trade items more easily amongst one another. And the auction house really represents a safer place for them to do that. So this really all came out of players' desires. Um, and I, I think the auction house is going to, be, going to be great for people when they actually take advantage of it and start using it. So. And it, it, it was also an interesting technical challenge. We work very closely with the Battle.net team, and uh, I think they've done a, a fantastic job with it. So. Infinite amount of time and money. Nin ninjas, for sure. Yes. Definitely ninjas yeah. everywhere. Behind every bush and tree, out of every crack in the ground, just constant ninja. That's what I would add. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> Um, we've made reference to this before, um, adding a version of Jay Wilson in the game that you can hunt and kill and then loot the corpse of, that would be funny. And so maybe we'd add that as well. No, actually, it's, it's, it's wonderful to see. Like, everybody at the office, is they're all very excited to, to actually play the game after release. It's, it's a sign of a great game because everybody just, they, they come in early, they stay late trying to play this game. For which class I'm going to play, I mean, there's, all of the classes are really good, so it's like trying to pick a favorite child, but, uh, you know, and I've played them all. But I'm probably going to play a, a hardcore witch doctor once it's, once it's released. Um, it's just, it's one that I, I just want to try to explore more, I think. But they're all very exciting. They all feel incredibly epic, so in, in very different ways. So give them all a shot, I would say.
So the first class that I'm going to play after release will be a, um, a hardcore monk character, probably the female character because I really love the voice actress uh, that we had for that in English. Um, but I've played all the classes. I recently had a wizard character um, during our internal testing and I, I got her stuck in hell and it's too hard for me now. I can't go any further. So I either have to farm some items with her or move on to a new character. So. Or get better. Or get better. <laughs> Learn to play. So internal testing, um, it is our goal to you know, do a good coverage on everything and we certainly have a lot of very skilled players internally. Um, I think we've always found in all of our games that there's even more skilled players out there in the world. It's going to be interesting to see when people first beat Inferno mode. Um, I'm not sure it's possible. Prove me wrong, players. <laughs> prove me wrong. It's certainly mathematically possible. Let's see what happens. Uh, it's a great amount of, of challenge and it's not the only fun way to play either is just keeping going through the difficulty settings. It's very replayable. There's lots of random content and for people who find those walls of difficulty playing at a lower difficulty setting, one that you can't accomplish, you can still find new gear, you know, and continue to, to level up over that, that course. So, you know, it's fun either way. It's really hard to pin that down into one thing. Um, it's a wonderful social experience. I mean, with, with Battle.net, we give you such a great opportunity to get online quickly and play with your friends. You know, with the auction house, now you can trade items with your friends easily. Like, the, the game is just fantastic. And it, it's very easy to learn. So if you're the kind of person that maybe hasn't played the Diablo franchise ever before, now is the perfect time to just jump in and give it a try. And it also just takes a lifetime to master. So I think that everybody's gonna have years of replayability with this game. I'm, I'm very excited about it. So what makes Diablo 3 uh, so awesome that you have to buy it? Some of the gear is so incredibly cool that you will not believe it when you see it. There is a barbarian weapon, for example, which is literally a tree trunk. But it's not just any tree trunk, it's a petrified tree trunk, so it's made of stone. It's twice as long as him, and he can swing that as a weapon. How can you not want that? You gotta buy this game. Um, yeah. All right, so thank you everyone um, for being so patient. Thank you fans. Um, there is no cow level and we'll see you online. Yeah, thank you everybody for being so patient. Uh, come out tonight. I hope you guys come out and support the launch events. Uh, it's a super exciting time for us and I uh, can't wait to see everybody online. So. Thanks a lot.